So the, the story starts um, growing up in Northwest Indiana, kind of near Chicago. And my dad worked for himself. I was the youngest of seven kids. He was an architect slash home builder. I used to love watching him run his small business. So it's interesting that I ended up at a large company because that was never my focus. Got a degree in economics and ended up interviewing with Caterpillar. Actually got to ride a machine my first day of my interview, so that must have stuck with me because I stayed for 25 years. From a leadership point of view, I was a young supervisor, about 29 years old, and I had a group of about 12 or so working for me. Caterpillar mentioned that they were going to start doing a uh, employee satisfaction survey. The survey was taken, <clears throat> and my first results came back 100% satisfied, which I was humbled by that. 100% of my people said they enjoyed working for me, enjoyed coming to work every day. And then my whole career shifted after that. 90 days later, a crazy vice president at Caterpillar decided that I should be leading more people than 10 or 12, so he had me lead around 400 people at a, at a facility in North Carolina. And then Caterpillar started sending me around the world. So we end up going to Melbourne, Australia, Tokyo, Japan. I spent a lot of time just in Asia in general with these same philosophies, larger plants, more people, but realizing that human beings are human beings, even though the cultures are different. We put a set of values in place that says these are the behaviors that we want all employees to live by, me included. We trained our people well, so they were informed, and then we instilled passion in many, many ways. But that their hearts were beating for their jobs. And, and what I saw was not only did that make our bottom line better, but they went home at night and were better parents, better spouses, better citizens. Just the other parts of their life were, were getting improved. And this happened all around the world. And I started just to see this pattern and, and realize that people are spending 40, 50, 60 hours every week of their life at work. So we should really focus on that beyond just the bottom line of the company. But I left really for a higher calling to go take this journey I'd been on and help people in a different way. The wonderful thing about John is he came in and he told his story and the employees got it. He's lived it, he's done it. This was the leader of a worldwide business who found something that worked all over the world and he was willing to bring it to Little Rock and share with us. All of the things we teach, our curriculum, how we help leaders one-on-one, -on -one. anything we do to help the bottom line of a company or just to change the work environment, it's all from the real world. It's not theory. It's, I always say that the entire curriculum I wrote for our leadership training was really the diary of my life as a leader. Things I did well, things I didn't do well, and now we get to share that with people. Experts will tell you there's 70% of people are disengaged at work. That's on the high side. In many countries, it's worse than that. So again, spending 40, 50, 60 hours every week of their life. So it's not good for the bottom line of the company. It's not good for the economy of that country. And certainly it's not good for that individual or their families when they go home at night. And so what VIP2 has become is really a mission. It's not a company. I wouldn't say that. We've got a small group of people. Every one of our people are actual leaders. They, they, we don't have anyone that is just a trainer in front of the room. These are people that believe in our mission. Uh, our team is very, very diverse in, in age and race and backgrounds because we know that when you have different hearts and minds around the table, amazing things happen. So our team at VIP2 reflects that. I like the fact that he has assembled uh, a diverse group of people and, and so that when he is speaking to, you know, for example, the 50 supervisors in my utility, you know, the range from age to race to gender, that he's bringing in speakers that that mirror our, our, our demographic. I've probably attended well over 100 seminars and motivational events through my business career. And for the first time in my entire business career, I spent two days and I literally could not take my eyes off of John or the other presenters, nor could I quit thinking about the things that he was talking about empowering the people that were actually doing the work, uh, creating an environment where people wanted to come to work. So in short, I think VIP2, again, it's a mission of dedicated, passionate people who have been in leadership positions that are worrying about all employees, that they enjoyed being at work, that they were informed, that they knew what they were doing, that they had passion for what they did, that their hearts were beating about their jobs and they weren't just there for a paycheck. And, and what, what we're so proud of is not 
the many companies whose bottom lines have gotten better, that's great. But to see individual lives change and people that look at things differently, and I think they go home differently. And so now they're not using those 40 and 50, 60 hours a week just to make a paycheck, but it's changed their whole outlook on life so that now their children and their spouse and their community and their neighbors and their extended family feels a difference in them. And that, for us, that's what VIP2 is all about.